G'day, Seaton Tropic Growers. It's Farmer Jones again on video number 45. And if you recall on my previous video, we were looking at the concept or idea of using sugarcane as biomass uh, in our tropic systems. And if you notice on the rows over there, I showed you how we plant sugarcane in between the uh, tree, tree, uh, uh, trees and how we irrigate it. In this case, we did it slightly different. So we made a row dedicated to biomass in parallel to the tree row. And we irrigated it using trickle tape instead. Now for the most part this was very successful, uh, but however the centre one uh, got a little bit clamped up in the root mass of the uh, sugarcane. So as I explained last time, it's very easy to plant sugarcane. You just cut the billets and you just plant them down sideways. And you can just follow along like that with your trickle tape. You just paint your billet along like that. Then the whole billet is receiving water. We, in this case, we planted one, two, three trickle tapes. This row is 50 metres long, and the biomass took about six months, and it reached almost nine feet. So it was quite successful. Uh, we were quite happy with it. It gave some welcome shade to this new row in the hottest time uh, part of the summer, especially with the western sun after two o'clock, one or two o'clock. And these trees seem to appreciate that extra shade. Now it's winter time and we brought down the biomass so that these can receive a little bit more sun. So we've got a little bit left. We found it very easy to, to remove the sugar cane. Just get yourself one of these cane knives uh, from a local hardware for $50, $60. But you need that razor sharp. So before we use these each day, the first job is to touch it up with a sharpening stone and a little bit of oil. So razor sharp, be careful, it's a dangerous tool. But Taylor made for removing sugarcane. So that's about as difficult as it gets. And as you can see along the row here, it's produced an enormous amount. So, so far, the sugarcane looks good, but with one caveat. If you make a dedicated biomass row, uh, you have this problem of the rootstock. So these rootstocks are a little bit difficult if you wanted to use machinery to mulch the sugar cane or mow it sideways. A lot of the mulch will just drop into these rootstocks and prove a little bit difficult uh, to remove. So if you decide to use sugar cane, it's, that particular row will be sugar cane. These roots will be very difficult to remove and only possible probably with a ripper tine and a flower mower with a tractor. So once you go down the path of sugarcane, you're really locked into that path. But as you can see, the superior amount of bi uh, biomass here. Now, we explained last time, this is very similar to bunner grass. And bunner grass is a very, also has these segments. Uh, it, Bunner grass, which you see along the highways in Queensland, if it falls down, will drop roots. So it's very invasive and can quickly get out of control 
and overtake your system. The good thing with sugar cane is these will clump up a little bit like clumping bamboo and, and just stay there. It won't send runners, runners under the ground. It's not the invasive sort of species. So in terms of tonnes per hectare, or dry mass weight per hectare, probably sugarcane is one of your winners. Now in this state of Queensland, and in particular our area, there are sugarcane farms around, so it grows very well in our climate. It's a subtropical to tropical climate. And that may or may not suit where you are, but in our case, it was an obvious choice. So what do we do with it now? So, we're just basically throw it down our trusty wood chipper. And this goes on the end of a tractor, of course. Now, just one tip. We found it's better to dry the sugar cane out before your wood chip. While the stems are wet and moist, we found that the sugar cane is clagging up or blocking uh, the, the ex exit shoot on this particular wood chipper. All you've got to do is just wait a week or two and let the sugar cane dry out in the sun. And I reckon you'll have a better option. So that's our final thoughts on sugar cane. Uh, we'll probably continue to use it uh, in between the tree rows, on the tree rows themselves. It's been fairly successful. However, as you can see, by dedicating a, a, partic a row solely to sugarcane, knocks that row out permanently. It will only be used for sugarcane. So if you had plans of using this row for vegetables in the early stages of your system, you might want to wait until you introduce sugarcane. Wait till the trees are starting to shade out and your options for vegetables are becoming reduced. So at that stage, the trees are medium height, they're getting more and more hungry, in which case a sugarcane row uh, would serve well as a feedstock uh, to those trees. Right now, uh, it's a little early, uh, but as, again, I can't obviously grow vegetables in this row uh, pretty much permanently from now on. So that's just something to think about. I personally, moving forward, am inclined to plant the, the sugarcane billets between the existing trees on the tree row. That's just me. You might have some different ideas. So if you enjoyed that uh, information, uh, you can click like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video, video number 46. Over and out.